All right, so what is up you guys, Matt here, and now we are on the second episode of the splash pad building. This is gonna be based around planning, or how we came up with the plan of the splash pad, and also we're gonna talk about bullet points on common questions about the splash pad. So I guess let's get right into the first thing, and as a common question, what is a splash pad? Just to get that out of the way. Uh, a splash pad, well, it's basically, uh... A sprinkler system. We used to run through sprinklers and put them out for the kids, still do. Um, but a splash pad has zero water loss virtually. Mm -hmm. um, where a sprinkler system, it's spraying, it's going in the ground, you lose your water. So a uh, splash pad has a tank, and then there's a pump that pulls it through some plumbing, and then it squirts it out on the pad, and then it drains goes into a drain which circulates back into your tank and your tank could be a swimming pool or an underground tank or a pond or a lake mm -hmm. something like that so i guess we can start talking about the uh design that you came up with and how you got the idea behind it yeah um well the idea behind it was when we bought our new house a few years ago we start watching home improvement shows, backyard uh, shows, and all of a sudden I see them putting in a splash pad, and I was like, that's what we need. So it's been three years in the making. We thought about it. I've done research, and uh, so we had to do some repairs on our pool, so we decided to get one. We were looking at the, tie, or the standalone kit because that seemed like the easiest you just dig a hole for a tank you put it in there you put your nozzles underground and then you pour concrete around it and you have a splash pad which is pretty much the easiest and cheapest way to go about it um, even though it's a higher initial cost uh, instead we decide to go with the tie-in kit which goes to the pool another big reason is it's a very safe unit there's no water so we have our pool, which is nice, and the grandkids go in it, but then the parents have to go in and you gotta watch the kids. Mm -hmm. So with the splash pad, they can go out on there. There's no water, it just drains off into a drain. So they could be out there running through the fixtures and have a good time and we don't have to worry about them. So before we get to the questions, let's get into your design that you came up with for um, All right. the yeah. splash pad. Um, I was, if initially I was thinking square, you know, but then it's like, it's going to take up too much of the yard. So then I was thinking round, but then I was like, round is too small. So what I ended up coming up with is a kidney bean shape, um, which fits alongside of our pool nice. And it gives a lot of play area for the kids and uh, the fixtures that we bought along with the spray nozzles. Mm -hmm. So when I started designing it, um, I was trying to figure out size, so I was scaling it up in uh, Adobe Illustrator, which is a scaling program. Um, and so I started laying it out, and I thought I was doing pretty good. It was about 14 foot wide by 25 foot long, seemed plenty big enough. And then uh, just the other day, we went and laid it out, painted it down on the ground, and realized it was way too small for what. I was thinking in my head. So went back to the drawing board, kept the same shape, made it bigger. So the final size of the one we're going with is 17 foot wide from its point to point area. It's kind of got a hump back because of kidney shape, but then uh, 30 foot long. And that gives you plenty of space to um, set all the fixtures, put all the spray nozzles, add your lighting. And, uh, and then we're also putting a dry walk path around the outside of the splash pad too, so that you can, um, parents don't have to get wet. They can walk around and watch the kids if they want. So for the nozzle locations, uh, they can be pretty much placed random locations. Uh, what we did is, the thing with the nozzles is they're controlled off the manifold system which is controlled off an electronic solenoid, which is controlled off the controller unit. So you don't want all the nozzles 
that are on the solenoid to be all in the same spot and right. be redundant. So, um, so I, we do have a strategic location for um, the nozzles, which I'm sure we'll show you in a graphic, um, and then how they'll operate with the solenoid. Um, and then at the same time with the placement, we also have different types of nozzles. So one will be a shower spray, one will be what we call a bubbler, which just kind of spits up some random. And then the majority of them in, a, in the, the splash pad are adjustable, so you can point them different directions and get the adjustment you want on them. On the manifold solenoids, one, two, and three are all gonna have the adjustable nozzles. Solenoids four and five are going to have shower nozzles. The solenoid number six will have uh, bubble the bubblers. Then for our lighting, they are gonna go into a strategic location. Basically, what we're doing with those is putting them right where they'll highlight the water most. So um, that'll kind of be planned out when we put the pad together. Okay, we're gonna move on to some questions and I guess we'll get started with the cost of it. So how, how much has it cost so far or what underlying costs are there that you also got to take into effect other than just the splash pad itself? All right, so with Rain Deck, we spent 5,500 bucks. That included the three big fixtures and all the spray nozzles that we needed. Um, the nice thing with Rain Deck was when we placed the order, it took 11 days till it shipped out, and that mm -hmm. was for the painting and everything. Um, then we bought a bunch of items uh, from other miscellaneous places. Uh, we bought a drain uh, for the splash pad. That was 75 bucks. Um, we're building our manifolds. We're building the Sidewinder fixture. Uh, the solenoid manifold and the three zone uh, manifold. Which would have cost a lot if you were to actually just get it pre-made, right? Yeah, yeah. So for example, the Sidewinder, if you bought it, was would be 700 bucks. The solenoid manifold is 630 bucks. The three zone manifold would be 248 bucks. So that's $1,600 in fixtures if I would have purchased it direct through, through Rain Deck fully assembled uh, so instead we're building our own so I bought all the schedule 80 uh, components to build it which will be in a future episode um, and I only spent about 500 bucks on those um, so that was an $1,100 savings just for that um, the lighting I paid $27 per light fixture and we're, we have 12 of them going in. So with that, the transformer and the controllers, I'm in about 400 bucks. And then there was the controller for the splash pad that I got off eBay for 500 bucks. Um, there's other additional costs. We're, we're not including yet the, all the plumbing, the Schedule 40 plumbing to run from the, the pool room, from the manifold to the splash pad. Uh, we, we don't have those calculations yet, but, uh, but that should give you a basic idea. We're not, this doesn't include the cost of the concrete. Mm -hmm. um, if you need to run a, a backhoe operator to do the digging, um, anything like that, that's not included. This is just the basics. That's kind of where we're at on this right. so far. So another thing is like, how big does a splash pad like have to be? Like, does it have to be a certain size? Does it have to be? No, I mean, you could have it as little as six or eight foot round and have uh, a perimeter of six or eight nozzles around the outside shooting to the center. You could even throw a little mini mushroom or a fire hydrant in the center if you wanted a fixture. Um, that just adds more cost. Right. Um, but, but no, you can put them anywhere. They can be fairly cheap or they can be very expensive. Um, the big thing is you got to remember to put in the concrete and then they also have a rubberized coating, which you can put on the concrete to, um, protect kids if they fall down or something, mm -hmm. but that's another cost, um, where we didn't, we decide not to go with the rubber surfacing. We're just going to do stamped concrete instead. Right. So does nozzle placement matter at all? Or how do you come up with where you have to put the nozzles on the pad? Uh, you can put them pretty much anywhere. It's, it's up to your own imagination where you want to put them. Um, 
it, it's just comes down to where you want to locate them and then your nozzle type. Um, if you're going around the perimeter, you don't want a shower nozzle because that'll spray outside the pad. Mm. So you'd want adjustable nozzles to spray to the center. Um, that's so, I mean, it's, it's just up to your imagination. So that's the same with like the lights, the drain and the fixture. Yeah. Or there's a drain just ideally has to be somewhere in like the middle of it. Well, the drain, I don't think we mentioned that earlier, but, um, the drain typically goes towards the center, um, of your splash pad and then everything pitches to the center. Uh, we put our uh, bucket dump exactly in the center. So our drain's just gonna be off center from the dumping bucket. So now for, I guess the final question is, so how long does this, pro like a project like this take? Well, I mean, I've been working on and doing research since the beginning of winter. So I spent a lot of time researching it, but now that we're getting ready to break the ground and do it from breaking ground, I'm hoping it doesn't take any longer than a week to two weeks. And and again, we're doing the site prep ourselves. Mm -hmm. We didn't hire a contractor. If we were hiring a contractor, things would probably move a lot quicker. So um, uh, we're doing the site work ourselves and uh, getting the uh, uh, mini excavator in and doing the digging and uh, running the plumbing, running the electric, which the lighting is 12 volt. In case anyone is wondering, it's not 110, so it's going to be low voltage and safe to be around the water. Um, so we're doing all the work. We're doing all the forming for the concrete, and then we're going to, once we get that ready, we're bringing in the concrete guys, and they're doing all the concrete and finishing and stamping and and uh, all the color and everything that goes along with that. Right. Well, I think that is it for the question that we had. Um, I guess we can wrap this up. And if you guys have any specific questions, feel free to leave them in the uh, comments below and we'll go over it and look at it. And if there's any in-depth questions, I'll be the one to tell you about it. But if you do enjoy these videos, there's one gonna be every single week until it is complete. And then you guys can hopefully either learn how to build a splash pad yourself or at least learn how to get moving with it. Um, and that is it. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you do, drop a like. If not, dislike it. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.